you guys remember from Friday, we talked about uh, the, the basic connection between electricity and magnetism that was discovered in the year 1819 by a guy named Hans Christian Orsted. His discovery is so important that it is probably one of the single most important engineering discoveries ever. It is used in every, almost every single bit of technology that we have today. Your cell phones are based on his discovery. Okay? Your, uh, your television is based on his discovery. Your computer, your calculator, anything that's electronic is based on Orsted's discovery that were made almost 200 years ago. His discovery was simple. Electricity generates magnetism. Electricity causes magnetism. If you have a moving charge, okay, whether it's a moving charge moving through the air, an electron just traveling through the air, or an alpha particle moving through the air, whatever, or if you have a charge moving inside a wire, which is essentially an electric current, you will get a magnetic field. Simple as that. Now, the shape of the magnetic field is going to look different than it does surrounding a bar magnet. Okay, the direction of the magnetic field we define a little bit differently than we define the magnetic field surrounding a bar magnet. But in the end, it's the same kind of magnetic field. What is the shape of the magnetic field surrounding that moving electric charge or that wire that carries the electric current? What's the shape of it? Circular. Good. It's not only one circle, it's a series of concentric circles. What do we mean by that word concentric? Yeah. One circle around another circle around another circle, and they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, I'm going to draw a little X here, and that's going to represent an electron. Which way is that electron going? Sorry? Into the page. It's like that, it's like that, that dart or that arrow going away from you, right? You're looking at the back fins of that dart or that, that arrow going away from you. So we've got electrons, in this case, going into the page. I think it was Paige that said just a second ago that it's circular Concentric circles means circular, getting bigger and bigger, getting further and further away from each other. What does that tell us about the strength of the magnetic field? The fact that they're getting further away from each other as we get further and further out. It gets weaker, right? And that should make sense. If it's this current that's causing the magnetic field, then the strength of the magnetic field, when you get further away from what's causing it, is going to get weaker. Right? Just the same as the magnetic field gets weaker the further you are from a bar magnet it gets weaker the further you are away from this moving charge. So you get this moving charge going into the board, into the page in this case, away from you guys, uh, and you get these concentric circles that represent magnetic field lines surrounding that. How do we figure out the direction of that magnetic field? The hand stuff? I hear somebody say, the hand stuff. I see somebody else doing this with their hands. Okay? You're both right, kind of. Okay? If we could be a little bit more specific than the hand stuff or this, okay, then that'd be great. But you're both on the right track here. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to use what we call the wire grasp rule. Um, that's, what I, that's what I call it. That's what your textbook calls it. Uh, go to a different place, a different source. They may call it something different altogether. That's okay. Okay, there's no standard name for the rule that we're going to use to determine the direction of the magnetic field. But the basic idea is going to be the same no matter where you go. Here we're going to stick our left thumb. Left thumb because it's a negative particle. If we're dealing with an alpha particle or proton or something positive, we'd use our right hand. Okay, no different, except right hand. So in this case, left thumb in the direction of the particle, which is an end of the page. So we're going to stick our thumb like this into the page. Then we're going to clench our fist. Okay, we've got a problem though when we go to clench our fist, at least it seems like we have a problem, okay? So you've got thumb in the direction of the, of the current, clench my fist, how far do I clench my fingers here? Do I clench them like this? Do I clench them like this? Do I clench them like this? It doesn't matter. Because in the end, even though my fingers are what point in the direction of the magnetic field that's caused by this moving charge, and in the end, no matter, where, wherever I clench my fingers, my fingers seem to be pointing in a different direction. In the end, they all still end up pointing counterclockwise. Right here, you can see that my fingers are to the right of the charged particle. Right here, my fingers are pointing upwards. If I crunch it a little bit further, my fingers are above the moving charged particle. Which way are they pointing right now? To the left. 
If I crunch them a little bit further, my fingers are to the left of the moving charge. Which way are they pointing? Downwards. And so on and so on and so on. So it works still. It doesn't matter which, how far you crunch your fingers, they're all still going to point no matter how far you, you crunch them or where you put them exactly, your fingers are all going to point counterclockwise in this case. So my magnetic field here would be counterclockwise. Does that make sense? Let's, uh, let's deal for just a second here with a, a negative particle that's going out of the page. You could probably make a pretty good prediction right now which way the magnetic field is going to point surrounding this one. But let's go through the rule just in case here. Okay, left thumb, because it's a negative particle, out of the page. Okay, it looks like this. My fingers above the wire are pointing to the right. To the right of the wire, they're pointing downwards, and so on. So it's going to be, in this case, clockwise, right? We could have, brought, we could have probably predicted that without even doing the hand rule, right, Nick? Without even doing the hand rule? Why? Yeah, if you've got a charged particle, the same kind of charged particle going the opposite direction, then it seems pretty, pretty logical that the magnetic field is also going to point in the opposite direction. Hey, i got a question for you now. We've got negative particles going into the page, negative particles going out of the page. Let's say we've got both of these at the same time. Two wires, one with electrons traveling through it into the page, one with electrons traveling through it out of the page. Those two wires will experience a magnetic force between each other. They're going to affect each other. Whenever you have two magnetic fields, there's an effect, right? When we have two magnets, there's an effect. Okay, whether it's North Pole and South Pole or North Pole and North Pole, there's an effect. So if we have two wires both producing a magnetic field, there will also be an effect. Here's the question. Is the effect on these two wires attractive or is it repulsive? Attractive or repulsive? We're going to go through this. When we see the answer, I don't want you to memorize it. Don't memorize the answer. Pay attention to the logic that we go through in determining whether this is an attractive or repulsive force here. Anybody want to take a stab at it? Does anybody have some logic that they might want to use to determine whether this is attractive or repulsive? Why do you say repulsive? Okay, so okay, so the magnetic field is 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 going up and to the left, up and to the right. Oh, wow, that's the best answer that I've had when I've asked this question in a lot of years. Actually, that's a good answer. You're right, and it's a good justification why. I'm going to pretend. I'm going to pretend we have a couple little bar magnets here. We don't. But we can pretend we do, because we have a magnetic field, right? The magnetic field that surrounds bar magnets would go from north to south, outside of the magnet, or from south to north, inside of the magnet. Therefore, if this magnetic field right here, okay, on the left-hand side, side number one, was caused by a bar magnet as opposed to the, the uh, wire with the current going through that it was, then this would be north and this would be south. Agree? Okay, on the other side, this would be south and this would be north, right? Let's again pretend we have these two little bar magnets producing the magnetic field that is really just produced by this moving charge. Right? Pretend we have that. What's going to happen to those two bar magnets? They're going to repel each other because it's self against self. Okay, your logic was essentially the same as my logic. Okay, you didn't pretend you had two little bar magnets there, but in the end, your idea of the magnetic fields going away from each other as opposed to, you know, as opposed to getting in the same direction, um, you know, that was, that was essentially what we did here, just minus the, the two pretend bar magnets there. Does that make sense, guys? What if, so I drew my two little pretend bar magnets at the top. What if I had drawn them down here? I mean, who's to say that, like, there's no rule that says we have two little pretend bar magnets at the top of the page, right? I just made them up. They don't even exist. So let's say I had made them up at the bottom of the page. 
what would we have found? South, north, north, south. They would have they would have rebelled each other. What about right here? Uh, I would go south, north, and this would be south, north. What would happen to these two magnets? They repel each other. So it doesn't matter if you're using my logic here, drawing two little bar magnets, pretending there's two little bar magnets there. It doesn't matter where you put them. You're going to notice a repulsive force in any case. Does that make sense? I've given a question on a test uh, in the past that's asked you to determine whether something like this is attractive or repulsive. Hey, I don't remember whether they're going in the same direction or opposite direction or or, or whatever. And I don't remember if we put that question on your test or not, because you know we keep some questions from year to year. We swap some questions out from year to year. I don't remember if it's on yours or not coming up here in a couple of weeks, but hey, there's there's a decent chance that it is because it's been there in the past. Okay. Um, again, don't remember this. Don't memorize uh, that that's a that's a repulsive force. Just be able to figure it out. Okay, if you see that question, be able to figure it out. Okay. Um, let's say, uh, we're, let's just do a couple quick examples here. Uh, let's say in this case, we have an alpha particle, which is 2 plus. Let's say in this case, we have an electron, which is a negative charge. And let's say in this case, we have an electron moving to the left as a negative charge. First two questions should be, I think, pretty straightforward for us. We know that in both cases, the magnetic field is circular. Okay, there's lots of magnetic field lines. I'm not going to draw all the magnetic field lines. I'm going to draw the first one, Okay, the first magnetic field line for each one. Which way does it act, clockwise or counterclockwise in both cases here? Well, let's, uh, let's take your right hand for the first one. Why the right hand? It's an alpha particle. It's a positive particle. Left, negative, right, positive. It's kind of like way back in physics 20 on day one when you learned that if a velocity is to the left, we make it negative. If a velocity is to the right, we make it positive. Completely different concept here, but it is a way to help us remember that negative particles use a left hand and positive particles use right hand. So positive particle, right hand going which way? The X means into the page. So right thumb into the page, fingers are going to go fingers are going to go clockwise. Good. Uh, second one's a negative particle, it's going out of the page, left thumb out of the page, right? Okay, fingers go fingers go clockwise. So in both cases clockwise. How's that possible? We've got two different kinds of charges. Positive in a negative, yet we have the magnetic field pointing in the same direction. One's towards and one's away, right? Different type of particle, different direction. Hey, would these two guys attract each other or repel each other? Let's draw our pretend little bar magnets for a second. This would be south, this would be north, this would be south, this would be north. They would they'd attract each other, right? South against north. Okay, this third one's a little bit trickier. Sometimes it's useful take a little manipulative like you do in math class in grade six to do something like this. Okay. Use a pencil, use a ruler, whatever. Okay, I'm going to use a board marker here. This board marker is going to be my wire. Okay, the red tip of this board marker is the way the current is pointing. The red tip is the arrow. So we've got an arrow pointing towards the left side of the room. Okay, that's one of the skills, by the way, as a teacher. It's one of the most difficult skills as a teacher to learn. Saying instantly, thinking backwards. Like me saying, this is pointing towards the left side of the room. Right? Why is it difficult? Because it's facing my right, right? But for you guys, it's, it's the left side of the room. So this red tip, the, the arrow is pointing towards the left side of the room. Okay, we're going to stick our thumb in the direction of that moving particle towards the left side of the room. Fingers go like this, right? Circle's going to go around like this, right? Well, we can't say clockwise or counterclockwise now, right? If we were looking at it from the end, you could. Okay, from this end, it would be counterclockwise. From this end, it would be clockwise. But from your perspective, it's neither one. 
anything I say to you here, guys, in terms of direction is always going to be from your perspective, right? Just like I said, that's to the left. Okay, whereas it's, it's my right. So when I give you an answer, it's not my perspective. My perspective is always opposite. Which way is the magnetic field pointing like this from your perspective? Well, it varies, right? Above the wire. Let's put my let's put my thumb in the direction of the particle towards the left side of the room here. Okay, let's crunch my fist and let's put my fingers directly above the wire. Right now they're above the wire. Agree? Which way are they pointing? Towards you guys, out of the page. Let's put my fingers now. Where are they now? No, no. Which way do they point? Where are they? In front of the wire. Which way do they point? Down. Where where are they now? Bottom, underneath the wire. Which way are they pointing? Into the page. And this is where it gets tricky. Where are they now? Behind it. Which way do they point? Up toward the top of the page. So the magnetic field goes around like this. Out of the page, down the page, into the page, and up toward the top of the page. Does that make sense? Okay, it's a little bit harder to see because it's not just a simple clockwise, counterclockwise answer. Can you draw that? Well, some people that are good at, good artists might be able to draw that. I can't very, very, draw it very well. I just express that in words. Okay, I just say, above the wire, it's out of the page. In front of the wire, it's down the page. Beneath the wire, it's into the page. And behind the wire, it's out of the page. That makes sense? Yes? Is that hard? Honestly, I think this one is. Okay, I, I think this one's a little bit tricky when you're dealing with with this one. These aren't so bad. I think this is a little bit tricky. Okay, what I'd like you to do right now is have a quick look at worksheet number 10, please. Just do it in class here, worksheet number 10. It's going to go relatively quickly. It's just a few of these problems to get your hands going and make sure that you're good with this before we move on to the next thing. Worksheet number 10. All right, let's take a look at worksheet number 10 here. Did I tell you worksheet number 10 or 11? Yeah, number 10. Okay, I told you the right thing. That's good. Uh, draw the magnetic field surrounding the wire showing electron current below. Uh, electron current is the movement of negative charges, the movement of electrons, which is really the way that it happens inside wires. You may, every once in a while, see the term conventional current. Listen carefully. You're not going to see this very often, but I have seen it once or twice on the diploma exam. Literally, just once or twice. Okay, the odds of you seeing it again I don't think are very high at all, okay, but it's possible. Conventional current means the flow of positive charge. Electron, flow of negative charge. Conventional current, the flow of positive charge. Now, it's really the flow of negative charges through wires. You can't get protons flowing through wires, right? Sometimes we talk about conventional current. Sometimes books use conventional current because back before we knew any better, it was just assumed that it was positive charges that move, not negative charges that move. And some books, some sources, still use that, still assume that. doesn't mean that they, they don't know any different. Okay, everybody knows now that it's negative charges that move, but some books still use it just because that's the way it was always done, and it works. It always gives us the same answers okay, if, we, if we're consistent within the question. Okay, if you see that term conventional current, use your right hand. If it's electron current, use your left hand. Does that make sense? I doubt you'll ever have to worry about that, but if you do, you know what it is now. Okay, electron current going into the page as represented by this X. Okay, if listen, as soon as I see a magnetic field problem, okay, electron current, I'm gonna probably just write LH just to remind myself that it's the left hand. Okay, as I was helping a couple people with a couple of different things here, I noticed in a couple of instances, people just using the wrong hand, doing it properly, just using the wrong hand. Okay, that is probably one of the single biggest, not biggest, single most common mistakes that people make in all of Physics 30, is just using the wrong hand for one of these problems. Okay, you know what you're doing, use the wrong hand. Okay, this is a left hand problem, because it's electron current. Thumb into the page. Fingers go, which way is it going to be? Clockwise or counterclockwise? 
counterclockwise. Magnetic field surrounding electron current this way, which is out of the page. Question one and two are just like our examples, right? Right, Max? Left thumb out of the page. Fingers go. Fingers go clockwise, right? Number three, some people drew this and, and drew it pretty well, actually. I, I'm fine with you drawing the direction of the magnetic field surrounding one of these, these wires. Okay. I'm not going to try to do that because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher it, okay? Butcher the diagram. I'm going to use, I'm going to give my answer in words. The direction of the magnetic field surrounding the electron current below. So the electron current is going to, to your right, okay? It's going this way. Here's my, here's the wire that I'm holding up right now. Okay, the electron current is going this way, okay, the direction of the tip of the pen to the right. I'm going to stick my left hand, because it's electron current again, my left thumb to the right. Above the wire, which way are my fingers pointing? This is the page, right? This is the plane of the page. Which way are my fingers pointing right now? Into the page. Right now they're behind the wire. Which way are my fingers pointing? Down, toward the bottom of the page. Um, let's try to twist this around with my rotator. I've got serious rotator cuff issues with this, so if I ever, sometimes I can't do things with, get to the hand rolls and it's, uh, sometimes I just, I can't physically move my shoulder in that direction, but we'll try here. So, you know what, the easiest way to do is actually do this, turn around. <laughs> okay. Fingers are below the wire right now, which way are they pointing? This is the plane of the page. Fingers are pointing out of the page. And in front of the wire, my fingers are pointing up. Now, some of you, I always get this. Well, how do you know, like, where your fingers are? You know, like, right now I'm saying they're above the page. Right now I'm saying they're in front of, sorry, above the wire. Right now I'm saying they're in front of the wire. Like, my fingers go from, like, here all the way around, right? What am I really looking at? Not my whole fingers. Yeah, just looking at the tips of my fingers. Paint them red. Okay, everybody get some nail polish. On your, everybody go crazy. Get some, get some purple or neon green or something nail polish. Remind you that you're using your fingertips, okay, not your whole fingers. Okay? Where are my fingertips? In front of the wire. Which way are they pointing? Up, toward the top of the page. Got it? Okay, number four says... The direction of the magnetic field surrounding the alpha particle. This one is the one where it's really important to write that down. Because this is the one where people really make the mistake, usually, is on the alpha particle, on the positive particle. Because they get so used to doing it with the left-hand rule, the left-hand wire grasp rule, uh, that uh, they just automatically do that. Okay, right-hand rule this time, because it's an alpha particle positive. Thumb in the direction of the particle. Fingers go... Where are my fingertips right now? To the, to the right of the wire. Which way are they pointing? Into the page. Behind the wire, it's towards the left of the page. To the left of the wire, it's out of the page. And in front of the wire, it's to the, to the right. Make sense? Okay. You will, for sure, you will get questions on the wire grasp rule in your unit test. You will, for sure, at least as sure as I can be, get your questions on the diploma exam on the wire grasp rule. You will see this again. Okay? You will, on Wednesday's quiz, get questions on the wire grasp rule. Okay? Got it? Yeah. No, not at all. No. Uh, I need to just ask guys if you didn't hear. Um, does it matter what order it's in? You know, in, above the wire, below the wire? doesn't make any difference in the world. Some people didn't even express it on you that way. Some people just uh, drew the diagram and were good at showing in the diagram which way the field is pointing in, in all of those different spots. It doesn't matter as long as, um, as long as you're expressing which way the magnetic field is pointing essentially in all points around it. Okay? It doesn't make any difference at all. Um, let's take a look at number five here now. This one's a little bit different. It's like we've got to do algebra almost with a hand rule. Okay, we're rearranging it to solve for a different variable. Okay, v is equal to d over t, the first equation you learned on the first day of physics 20. Rearrange it to solve for d. 
or rearrange it to solve for t. Here we've got the wire grasp rule, thumb, fingers. Usually we say, thumb points this way, which way do my fingers point? This time we're saying, fingers point this way, which way does my thumb point? Okay, so we're solving for my thumb this time. Right, Josh? Instead of which way my fingers point. So it's an electron, so it's going to be left hand. Okay, I'm going to forget about which way your thumb points right now. Don't focus on that. Let's look at my fingers needing to point clockwise. When my fingers point clockwise here, which way does my thumb have to point? Out of the page. Uh, moving alpha particle, this is going to be the right hand because it's a positive particle. Okay, once again, we're not going to worry about the thumb right now. We're going to worry about the fingers. They're going clockwise. Now, which way does my thumb have to point in order for my fingers to go clockwise? Into the page. So we'd represent that by an X. How many people got all six of those? Good. Excellent. So Wednesday's quiz, you guys are going to be, you guys are going to ace it, right? All right, let's take a look at this. I call this the coil rule. Your textbook calls it the wire grasp rule. Well, I see a problem in that because we just called the last one that we learned the wire grasp rule, and this one is different. So if we call them both the same thing, call two different rules the same thing, then that's going to inevitably lead to confusion. So we're going to just name this ourselves, the coil rule. The coil, coil rule for solenoids. Listen, it's physics. We have to have some kind of crazy term that sounds, sounds really smart, hey? What's a solenoid? Sorry? Hollow circle? Not exactly, but... Sorry? Piece of metal? Not exactly. Well, as best as you can, yeah. A solenoid is a coil of wire. So it's wire wrapped around like this as a coil. So a hollow, what did you say, Tanner? You said a hollow, hollow circle. So a solenoid often is a hollow circle, but it's the, the circle is the wire wrapped around like this, right? We couldn't just call it the coil rule for a coil wire. We had to call it the coil rule for solenoids. Solenoids makes us sound so much smarter, doesn't it? The coil rule for solenoids. I don't care what you call it. I just want you to recognize that word because we sometimes see that word on tests and exams. Okay? You want to call it the second hand rule. Go ahead. I don't care. Okay? We just need to be able to recognize that word solenoid. It's a coil of wire. So how does this work? Well, what are we trying to do here, first of all? This solenoid, this coil of wire, as it, as it has an electric current going through it, is going to develop a magnetic field. Now, the magnetic field in this coil of wire is going to be magnified. In other words, it's going to be amplified. It's going to be bigger than it would be if it was just a single wire going in a straight line. Can anybody explain to me, first of all, why that's the case? Forget about the direction right now and the polarity that this coil becomes. Let's just look at why the magnetic field is amplified, why it becomes stronger. Why, basically, can we get a strong electromagnet by wrapping a solenoid around a piece of steel? Why is it stronger than if we just have a wire going by a piece of steel? If you look like you're ready to give me an answer there. Magnetic field, you mean? Uh, well, kind of, yeah. Each part of the wire that goes by produces a magnetic field. So let's call this loop number one, loop number two, loop number three, four, five, six, seven. Each of those loops generates a magnetic field. Okay, whereas if I just had a wire going by like this, well, that generates a uh, current is going this way, the same as it is through, through those, uh, that wire and diagram B there. We generate a magnetic field, but this magnetic field is a certain value. Let's say it's 0.1 Tesla. Well, if that produces 0.1 Tesla, and this produces 0.1 Tesla, and this produces 0.1 Tesla, and this produces 0.1 Tesla, then all of a sudden we've got a much stronger magnetic effect here than we do right there. Does that make sense? Okay, so what is the polarity of this? What does it become? If this is the electromagnet that's picking up the cars in the junkyard, which end is the North Pole and which end is the South Pole? 
This is where we're going to use the, the, the uh, coil rule for solenoids. It's a little bit different. In fact, it's exactly the opposite to the wire grasp rule. Instead of saying thumb, Tanner, in the direction of the particles, fingers in the direction of the field, this time we're going to say fingers in the direction of the particles and thumb points in the direction of the magnetic field. So it's exactly the opposite. Okay, the last one was, okay, the first rule was thumb, the current, or the direction of the particles, fingers pointed in the direction of the magnetic field. This rule, the rule for solenoids, thumb points in the direction of the field, and my fingers point in the direction of the current. You can see now why it doesn't make any sense, really, to name these the same thing when they work exactly the opposite of each other. Okay, I want everybody to do this. Take a piece of paper, whether it's just a piece of scrap paper to your notes or scrap paper over here. Okay, you're not going to ruin this piece of paper. So take it out of your binder, whatever, it doesn't matter. Wrap it up like this. Just wrap it up in a circle like this. Okay. This is your solenoid. This is your coil of wire. Now, we have an electric current here in the coil of wire that you see on the board, the solenoid that's up here on the board. We have an electric current that's going up in the front. Which way would the electric current be going in the back? Down, right? It goes up, down, up, down, like this, right? You guys see that? Okay, again, this is the front. Okay, everything is from your perspective here, okay? When I say the front of the coil, I'm talking about this part of the coil, right? Even though that's not the front for me. So, if we want to find out the polarity of this, okay, if we want to find out the polarity of this, then we're going to stick our fingers in the direction of the current. It doesn't matter where you do it, front or back. Okay? I'm going to stick my fingers in the direction of the current in the front, so they'll be up in the front, right? If I wanted to do it in behind the coil of wire, my fingers would point down. Does that make sense? Okay, I don't care where you do it. Wherever, you, wherever is most comfortable for you, you know, in terms of twisting your body and twisting your hand, do it. Okay, whether your fingers are in the front or your fingers are in the back. My fingers are in the front right now. Which way does my thumb point? Points to the right. Okay, my fingers are in the back right now. Which way does my thumb point? To the right. So the magnetic field points which way? To the right. The magnetic field points inside the coil, in this case, to the right. Okay, fingers, current, thumb, field. Okay, wherever my fingers go, my thumb is going to point to the right. So, which end is the north end? Which end is the south end of this newly created electromagnet? This solenoid has an electric current going through it that becomes an electromagnet. Which end is north? Which end is south? Travis? The right side is north. Good. Didn't we say magnetic field points from north to south? Not inside. Who said that? Matt? Not inside. Goes from north to south outside, right? Inside, it goes from south to north. If we extended that, it would go from north to south outside of the magnet, right? Good answer. Good answer for you, too. Um, does that make sense? So the coil rule, sorry, the, uh, the wire grasp rule, usually you use it when you just have a simple one, you know, strip or one length of a, of a wire that's pointing, you know, in one direction here. It's, you know, pointing toward the top of the page or into the page. Okay, we use the solenoid rule, or the, the coil rule for solenoid, whenever we have that, that wire that's wrapped around. We could still technically use the wire grasp rule. It's just much harder to do the wire grasp rule when we have a solenoid like this. So we create a new rule, the solenoid rule, which is exactly the opposite of the, uh, the wire grasp rule. Okay? Fingers, thumb, instead of thumb, fingers. Kids? Okay, I'm going to draw a couple examples of those on the board here, because this is the one that I find people have a little bit of trouble with sometimes. I would say we've got uh, a piece of steel inside here, inside this loop of wire, this coil of wire, this solenoid. We have our solenoid going like this. Uh, let's attach it to a... Let's attach it to a battery. 
That's a symbol for a battery, by the way, or a cell. A battery is actually, technically, a cell is, is one, and a battery is multiple cells like this. It doesn't really matter. That doesn't really matter for us, though. The, the long end of the battery will always be positive, and the short end will be negative. I always remember that myself. Okay, I'm, I'm terrible at remembering things like this. Okay, I always have, a, have to have a way to remember this. Okay, I always remember which end is the, the uh, positive, which end is the negative, by looking at, okay, there's my battery. The, the positive end, the one with the vertical line, the symbol, positive symbol, the one with the vertical line, okay, corresponds to the end of the battery with the longer vertical line. Okay, and the negative side is the other one, the one with the shorter vertical line. So that means the electrons are leaving the negative end of the battery going this way. Right? It's going to go counterclockwise there. It means it goes up in the back, down in the front. Up in the back, down in the front. Up in the back, down in the front, and so on. Okay, we see that, guys? We haven't found the polarity yet, have we? Okay, we've just kind of looked at the question here right now. Which way is the polarity going to be? Okay, which end of this piece of steel is going to be north? Which end is going to be south? Okay, let's wrap up our coil again, our solenoid. Which way should my fingers point in front of the coil? Down. Okay, if you want to put your fingers behind the coil, that's fine. Okay, whatever works for you. Okay, in front of the coil, my fingers point down. Which way does my thumb point? It points towards the left, right? So the polarity of this is going to be well, the magnetic field is going to point this way. Travis, which end is the north end? Which end is the south end? Good. The left side is going to be north, of course. The right side is going to be south. The magnetic field points from north to south, outside of the coil, but inside the coil it points from south to north. So your thumb, essentially, your thumb is always going to point towards the north. Make sense? How about this one? That's positive, right? That's negative. Left side is positive, right side is negative. Just because of the way the, the symbol for the battery is drawn. Uh, electric current goes the uh, well, same thing. Oh, it's, it's, it's counterclockwise, right? Same answer, right? Let's try this. Which way does the electric current go in front of the, uh, in front of the piece of steel? Up in the front, down in the back. Up in the front, down in the back, and so on. Okay, let's try this. Here's our solenoid, all wrapped up. You can do this, by the way, on a test. Take a piece of paper, wrap it up like this. Okay, you're not cheating by using a manipulative that you create in the middle of an exam. Okay, which way do my fingers need to point in front of the coil? Up. Which way is my thumb pointing? To the right. So the magnetic field is this way. That makes this the Travis. This and the north and this and the south. Wait a sec. It's opposite to the one we just did? How's it opposite? The, the battery is set up in exactly the same way. We've got a coil of wire going around this piece of steel. How can it be opposite? Sorry. Yeah, it's wrapped the opposite way. Okay, hey, listen, that's why I don't want you to try to start remembering. A lot of people think, oh, wait a sec. You know, I can, I can remember this. If the current goes clockwise, the magnetic field goes, uh, the north end is on the right side. If it goes counterclockwise, the north end is on the, the left side. Hey, that's only two things to remember. I can remember that. Yeah, but if I wrap the wire differently, then it becomes opposite. Okay, it becomes too cumbersome to remember that. Just figure it out. Every time you see a question like this, just figure it out. Got it? All right, I want to do, uh, this is not homework at all, guys. I just want to do uh, a couple quick little applications if we have time here. Certainly the first one, if we have time here. Uh, what do you see here right now? This is speaker. This is not a part of your curriculum, any more than electrostatic painting is or electrostatic precipitators are. Okay, this is just one more example that you'll probably never see again. You could. 
but probably never. It's one more example of us uh, trying to work through new things that we haven't seen and, and teach you to work through new things that we haven't seen before. Okay, how does this work? Well, coming from your stereo or your iPhone or whatever it is that's, that's making music, that's, that you're playing music with, is an electric current. There's a small electric current that goes through your headphone wires, goes into the speaker in your headphones. Excuse me. There's a small electric current. It goes through the speaker wire. It goes to the speaker in your car. It goes to a coil of wire that's wrapped around a permanent magnet, and it has an effect on that. We'll pick this up tomorrow, guys. Okay. We'll see what effect that has and how that actually produces the sound. It's not the sound that goes through the wire. It's an electric current. We'll see how it makes the sound at the other end of it. Okay. Have a good night, everyone.